Hello class, this is a short video about an acronym that I made up called SIFT. It is a trick to help you try to be able to solve for a variable. I think a lot of people get confused about what to do when an assignment says uh, solve for a variable. It means isolate that particular variable, get it alone. Solve for x means get x by itself on the left side of an equation and everything else on the other side. So I think you need maybe a little trick to help you uh, keep that in mind. And so I want you to remember SIFT. Now, some of you aren't acronym loving people, so the mental picture you should have for this is solving a puzzle. So somebody gives you a thousand piece puzzle, it's in a box, it's all taken apart, your job is to put it together. That's the analogous situation here. So what we're doing is we're going to do a acronym called SIFT, and I will try to think about this as a puzzle as I go. So I'm just gonna make up a problem. I'm gonna say that the directions say solve for x, like most directions do, and then you've got some horrible thing like three times x plus two over um, x times a plus b equals c plus d over um, nine plus Z. Okay, so this is horrible. Trying to get X alone is going to be very difficult. We're going to have to go the full route here. Now, the temptation, the thing that I find most kids want to try to do, most students are aiming to do, is that they think, okay, there's some way I can get there without making the mess, without having to just go and multiply and, and do all the things and there's some quick way to get there, and there's not. That one of the things that God has set up the world to be is that the simplicity that comes on the other side of complicated is much better than the naive simplicity of before. So what I mean is, if you have a puzzle, and you've got a box full of puzzle pieces, wham, just dump it out, get a big table, dump out your huge jigsaw puzzle, onto the table. So we need to do that. We need to just dump all this out. So what's gonna happen is, is because this is a horrible fraction, is I'm gonna have to cross multiply and I'm gonna have to distribute into all the parentheses and get rid of parentheses, get rid of fractions. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna spread, and I don't know how to spell, we're going to spread it out, okay? So that's S in SIFT. So in this case, I'm gonna have 3x plus 3z times nine plus, uh, oh, that was a two, uh, nine plus uh, z, and then that's gonna equal, uh, let's go ahead distribute the x, ax plus bx, all times c plus d. So you're, you're, you're wishing there's a way out. You're trying to find a way out of the mess. There's no way out of the mess. Embrace the mess, order is on the other side. So that's a six. So, okay, so first, uh, outers, inners, lasts. And then over here, first, outers, inners, lasts. Okay, so. That's horrible. I've made a huge mess. I've put all the puzzle pieces on the table. What do you do next with your puzzle piece? Well, the whole point of all this was that we're trying to get X alone. So we need to begin by getting everything with an X on one side. This is what you've always been doing in algebra. If you just had X's and numbers, you would get all the ones with X onto one side and all the ones without an X, the plain numbers, onto the other side. So that's all we're gonna do here. I call that isolate the variable that you want. So what that means is I need everything with an X, and in this case, I'm gonna go for the left side. So that's 27X plus 3XZ, uh, bring ACX over, bring ADX over. My word, does everything on the other side, I made this a weird one, everything on the other side had a, uh, an X in it. And now, onto the right side, I want all the things without an X. 
So that's just negative 54 and negative 6z. Okay, if I go too fast, pause it, check what I'm doing. I moved all the things with x onto the left and all the things without x onto the right. So now, what does the left side have in common? What is the important feature of the, uh, the left side? Well, with the puzzle, we've spread it all out and we have found all the edge pieces. We have found the edge pieces and the most important edge pieces are the four corners. Assuming you're solving a rectangular puzzle, you've got to find those four corners and then you start lining up all the outer edges and now you've got to start uh, getting together regions that look the same, that have some feature in common. And, and we've built the left side of our equation to be that way. We've made it so that the left side is everybody that has an X. So when everybody has an X, we can definitely factor it out. So that's what the F is uh, going to stand for in SIFT. So if I take out an X, I've got 27, and 3z and minus ac and minus ad and minus bc and minus bd and we didn't touch the right side at all. Now lastly I would have preferred for this to be sifd because you're just gonna divide and take it uh, over but in the real world there's no English word sifd so I have to be cute and I call it take it over. So we, how can I take over this expression right here? Well, I can divide by it. So that means x equals negative 54 minus 6z all over 27 plus 3z minus ac minus ad minus bc minus bd. So because I made that one up, it was rather horrible and I could have prevented a lot of chaos uh, if I had thought through one, but I just wanted to show you that this works anywhere. As long as you don't end up with an x squared, you can always clean this up and find a way to get x alone. You spread it all out, you have to get rid of fractions and parentheses, you isolate the variable you want onto one side, you factor it out of that side, and then you take over all the stuff that isn't x over to the other side. That'll get you x alone.